गुड मॉर्निंग ओह कैंडल इन प्रेपरेशन डिट मेक इट टू इट्स पोज येट नेवर माइंड स्टोर लाइट ऑफ क्राइस्ट शाइनिंग इन द डार्कनेस डिट क्राइस्ट कम to get people to fight the romans the occupying power in the holy land in his time and the absolute emphatic answer is a no full stop <clears throat> christ's message was always exclusively apart from the overturning of the money lenders tables in the temple where they were desecrating god's house with money a peaceful one turn the other cheek every single hair on the head of your fellow man woman and child is precious and special amen so violence is never the answer how so ever there's going to be an awful lot of it a great deal more than at present at the end times i didn't realize quite how bad the situation is physically on a day to day basis in the holy land now palestine israel Well, if you've got a pressure cooker and you put the gas sort of more or less full on and just leave it sitting there, <laughs> the inevitable will happen. Surely that must be obvious, but clearly it is not to the current regime in Israel, the leadership of Israel. And all those who support them they turned up out of the blue i think zionism actually it started in the early 1900s yes we all have a longing for a homeland fine and then of course the jews have a, a mandate from god to go to the promised land canaan across the jordan etc etc made to moses i think if i'm right and then there are covenants these promises from god to his chosen people the israelites through the centuries in the old testament which is to 3 even 4000 years ago going back to abraham <laughs> But the practical physical reality is that the Palestinians have been living there for hundreds of years and this occupying power turned up and annexed stole took over their land they've been farming it for hundreds of years for heaven's sake i'm not sure when it was built but that al aska mosque was i think 1400s so at least for 600 years the palestinians had been living in that land and then with reference to the bible and god and stuff a whole new set of human beings turn up and say no and then it's gone on from there it's either 47 or 48 the declaration of the state of israel and the other date i remember particularly i was alive then it's only a young fellow of 11 but i do remember the news and stuff a bit 
is um, the, the Six Day War in 1967. Well, you've got these two positions and I mean, I can't sort it out for heaven's sake. I can merely watch from afar in spite of the fact that my evening prayer remains the words of Simeon when he saw Christ at the temple. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes hast, hast seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of thy people, Israel. Amen. So I cherish those words. Christ was a Jew. The Jewish people are God's chosen people. The Israelites, the Hebrews. But not all of them. There are various passages, and then of course the Old Testament is littered with prophecies and prophets speaking about, I mean, old Moses came down off the mountain and there they were worshipping a golden calf for heaven's sake. So right from the beginning of those, that exodus and so on, from Egypt and, and all of that, God's chosen people were missing the point. But then God says, that they also come to shine a light for the glory. Lord. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of our people, Israel. So a light for revelation to the Gentiles, Aslot, the Goys. That's what God's chosen people are, the true ones. Then there's this whole question that, of course, the Jewish leaders were the ones who wanted Christ crucified, and the Roman Catholics only forgave the Jews for having Christ crucified at the Second Vatican Council in 1962-3. Went on quite a long time, I'm not quite sure exact months. And then there's the likes of the Holocaust, Hitler purporting to be a Roman Catholic. I suppose thinking he's doing God's work by getting rid of these people. That is not for us human beings. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So you leave all of that to God as our human response we have to respond to those who hate us with love that's the whole central thrust of Christ's message there's no argument about that or, or I mean if, if, if you can't his whole message was of love very deep love. So this is partly fired off by, at the moment, there's pretty serious trouble in the Middle East, uh, in the Holy Land, in Israel, with Palestine, which may now escalate further. Well, all those young people, bottled, kettled in the Gaza Strip. I mean, it's a million and a half people, I think, maybe more, utterly with nothing to do, just twiddle their thumbs and, and while away their lives. While the Israelis lorded over them with a stonking great wall around them and stuff. The same at Bethlehem, which means the house of bread for what it's worth. <laughs> 
where I've been is a stonking great wall. So on a day-to-day -day basis, the Palestinians are treated as second-class citizens in what, as far as they're concerned, is their own country. Then there's been the previous American administration winding the situation up by moving the American embassy to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, for instance, amongst other things. Well, it's, it's a sort of ongoing provocation, quite frankly, by money from the West. Jewish money in America, quite frankly, dictating America's policy. Mm. What happened to Myanmar, Burma? That was big news for a little while. I'm quite sure that hasn't gone away. Yet we hear nothing on the news. I deliberately listened to the BBC World Service on Radio 4 at night because they go more international rather than just our local, I'm in England, news. I mean, going back, there was Arche, East Timor, the Sri Lankan wound, I'm sure, is, is not so readily healed. And it goes on and on. Hong Kong, that was in headline news all the time. I'm sure that hasn't gone away. North and South Korea, I mean, I can just go on and on. And of course, Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Syria. And yet they don't get any news coverage at the moment. All of those places, much. Some young lad of nine years old was struck by a bolt of lightning. Now, how about that in Lancashire? For a striking piece of news, if I go through the news and I can get up at this time of day. Boy, oh boy. Why did God do that? Mm -hmm. Anyway. It's not all doom and gloom. Good human behavior, nice, normal, happy, smiley face, sound, normal, ordinary, day-to-day -day behavior does not get reported in the news, obviously. But that does not mean it's not still going on. I don't want to be a miserable old bunny. I live in this world too. But I can sense these signs of trouble ahead. The passages are there in the uh, three synoptic gospel, uh, gospels, so that's Matthew, Mark and Luke, not in John, about the end times. There'll be wars and rumours of wars and natural disasters and man-made disasters and all sorts of things, all of which Christ foretold at his second coming. Now, a friend has prompted me from Spain is at the end times now, and I've said, well, yes, but define soon. <laughs> is it happening soon? And my best reference for that is there's something called the 6,000 years, which is from the beginning of the Jewish calendar, which is 3,591, I think, if I can remember correctly. And that then makes it a couple of hundred years ahead, in fact. 2,200 and something. My maths isn't awfully good this time of the day. 
but not in our lifetimes, actually. In fact, if you even believe any of that, notably at the year 2000, I mean, everyone was rushing around. Mm. It's the end of the world and stuff. Well, I mean, I don't think God's awfully bothered about our little calendars, quite frankly. But he is bothered about every single hair on the head of your fellow human beings because they're precious and special. So you shouldn't kill them. So the indiscriminate... The Israelis give a warning. They down some residential tower and they had half an hour's warning to clear the place out. So I gather no one was actually, as far as they know, killed. Well, I mean, that's... And both sides remember the bad stuff the other lot have done and, and just kick in harder with more bad stuff from themselves. That's the whole utter message of Christianity, is this turn the other cheek, love your enemy. If there's no other part of Christ's message that you receive, receive that. Don't respond with your baser human self. Respond with a higher Christian self. Amen.